Investment in commodities is uh, better is is uh, one of the good options that is available to them. What are uh, the various uh, benefits associated with uh, commodity investing, and how do I typically measure the returns that are associated with investing in commodities? So these are some of the base prime elements we will try to uh, look at in this uh, session. So just before we get into the details of understanding the various aspects specific to commodities, what I would like to look at is over the last few years, <clears throat> we have been observing that the commodity prices are increasing year over year. And uh, especially in developing countries like uh, China and India, the commodity prices are uh, growing uh, year over year and it is even projected that this trend is going to continue for the next few years. So because of this reason an investment in commodities is typically looked at as a beneficial model uh, which could add a lot of value to the investor alongside his investment in traditional investments like stocks and bonds. And people generally, historically, when you look at the performance of the various uh, commodities, their returns were equally good to the traditional investments like stocks and bonds, but with very little layers of volatility. Even that is uh, adding up as an additional factor uh, or probably a good diversification uh, factor or even a good alternative to the typical traditional investments. And what we also see is the correlation which they have with the typical traditional instruments is very, very low. And as we can appreciate the fact, the lesser the correlation with a particular class of assets, the better the diversification advantage they give. So even from a, a risk reduction or a portfolio diversification perspective also, the commodities are giving a good uh, benefit to the investors. And finally, they are treated as a good hedge against inflation because in general, the definition of uh, inflation itself is an increase in the price of various basket of goods and services over the current price and most uh, uh, a decent composition of the basket is the essential commodities itself. So as the, when I say the inflation is high, obviously uh, the, the, the commodities prices also should generally be uh, higher to a large extent, which means I, I, even though my purchasing power is going down, but my cost of commodities is going up, which means I am not losing so badly, which means uh, the investment in commodities is actually acting as a better hedge for me. So from all these dimensions, people generally go forward looking for investing in the commodities. And just like any other uh, market, just like any derivatives uh, market, even the commodity derivatives market also has three major groups of investors, hedges, whose intention is to reduce the exposure to the risk. So here uh, in the hedges also we look at two major categories of them. One, the sellers of the commodity or probably we call them as producers of the commodity. So someone wants to sell oil. So he is producing oil uh, and uh, he is, uh, so for him, he generally goes on a short hedging position. Means he wants to lock the price, lock the selling price. That means he is taking a short hedging position. So the seller of a commodity is one category of hedgers as well as the buyer of the commodities. Who is the buyer of the commodity? Primarily uh, that particular companies which use that uh, uh, commodity as a part of their 
uh, industrial process as a raw material in their business those kind of companies let's say we are talking about uh, 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 we are talking about uh, gold as a commodity gold as a commodity is used in various industries so the there the buyer of the gold means the buyer uh, of the commodity which goes into the cost of production they want to make sure that the price of gold does not rise in future so they want to they want to go for a long hedge which means they want to protect themselves against the rising prices so the buyers of the commodities generally want to protect themselves from the rising prices so they try to get into a long hedging position whereas the seller of the commodities they try to get into a short hedging position because they want to protect themselves from the falling prices so whenever a person or a company is having an exposure to the underlying commodity and wants to protect itself from either the rising prices or falling prices that kind of a position is called as a hedging position so simple way to talk about the hedging position is i have an underlying i have a exposure any company which has an exposure in the underlying commodity market and and is taking an opposite position to protect itself from the falling prices or rising prices that is where we call uh, those kind of participants in the commodity or uh, derivatives market as the hedger positions whereas those set of participants who don't have exposure to the underlying physical commodity at all who are neither buyers of the commodity nor the seller of the commodity but still they get into the trading of that particular uh, commodity to make profits out of the betted prices so they try to bet the price uh, of the commodity in some direction and wants to based on their understanding and based on that they would like to make the profit if the prices move in their direction so they are typically taking the risk out of the hedgers so when hedgers are reducing their risk on that commodity speculators are increasing the risk so basically the other way i should put it is speculators are taking the risk of the hedgers or hedgers are transferring their risk to the speculators and because speculators are taking the risk on behalf of the hedgers they generally charge a premium we'll talk about this aspect they generally charge a premium which is what would be reflected as a part of the the futures prices then there is a third category of uh, investors in the commodity market who are called as arbitragers whose intention is to make riskless profits by trying to benefit from the mispricing of the assets in various markets various uh, geographies various time zones they want to benefit from the mispricings of the same commodity in different uh, markets it could be uh, because of uh, time difference spot versus futures differences or uh, the market 1 versus market 2 differences they want to benefit by the mispricing so they generally sell the overpriced uh, commodity and buy the underpriced because the underlying commodity will still be the same whereas uh, uh, because of various reasons it is priced differently in different markets and they want to take an advantage out of it the most common kind of an arbitrage mechanism we see in the derivatives mechanism is the cash and carry arbitrage the simple logic is as per as per the typical uh, equivalence or futures rate parity theorem you should see that the futures price is uh, 
स्पॉट प्राइस टाइम्स ई पर आर टी कंटिन्यूसली कंपाउंडेड रिस्क फ्री रेट ऑफ रिटर्न सो वेन एवर आई दर द इन रियालिटी द फॉरवर्ड प्राइज इज ग्रेटर दैन दस फॉर्मूला आर लेस दैन दस फॉर्मूला दे आई दर गेट इन टू इफ इट इज ग्रेटर इफ द फॉरवर्ड प्राइज इज ग्रेटर दैन एस नॉट इन टू ई पवर आर टी आर्बिट्राजर क्विकली he sells a forward contract for this price he buys the he buys the commodity in the spot market by borrowing this much amount at a risk free rate of return r which means at the end of the borrowing uh, period he has to pay only s not into e per rt but today he has frozen the contract saying he can sell the commodity after a certain time at f not which is greater than S not into e per R T. The difference is what is directly making a profit. So arbitrageurs look out for the mispricings or differences in the prices of the same commodity in different markets at different points in time and basically uh, try to log their uh, profits without taking any additional risk. That set of uh, investors in the commodity market that set of participants in the commodity market get classified as arbitrages these are the three major categories of participants we see in the commodities market then what differentiates a commodity market from any other typical traditional investment market if i look at the sp- stocks or bonds they are generally treated as financial assets or capital assets whereas when we talk about uh, commodity it gets it is a physical asset so there is something to do with the storability right different commodities have different levels of storability but when i said storability it's sometime something to do with the degradation for few days or few months or few years it can be stored without any degradation and at the same time the cost of storage is not so high then we say this particular commodity is storable but every commodity that i am trying to evaluate needs to be checked from the concept of storability so by storability what we are trying to understand is the degradability of the product and the cost associated with the storage then we are also looking at a specific feature of commodities which is the renewability can this product be renewable means can we can the same product be produced again and again again means let's say if i talk about a crop i sow the seeds i get the crop and again from the crop some seeds come up the same seeds can be used for regenerating the crop which means it's the same set of seeds which follow a cyclical manner seed gives rise to uh, a crop and crop contains seeds and again those seeds give rise to additional crop with those kind of products typically are called as renewable products renewable commodities whereas some other commodities once consumed they cannot regenerate they are non renewable kind of uh, products so the pricing or the evaluation for non renewable products the price is purely based on the current spot price whereas when we talk about renewable products even the future expected cost of production goes into the current price because these things will give rise to the raw materials again which can be used for regenerating the same product so the future cost of production also is bundled as a part of the current price for a renewable commodity so any commodity which we are trying to evaluate we need to be very careful of whether it is renewable or not that's one more specific feature along with the storability that is associated with commodities and as is 